Aloha, I'm your host, Winston Welch, and delighted that you are joining us again today for this <coughs> special edition of Out and About, a show where we explore a variety of topics, organizations, and events with the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinion expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization I might be affiliated with. Joining me today in the studio, I am honored to have a couple of wonderful ladies from Holly Keep Up. We have Michelle Rocca, the program coordinator for uh, the Holly Keepa Transitional Family Home Program. And we also have Jessica Carter, the foster home developer for the same program. And I, uh, there's a little, um, I'm curious as to what those are. And so any, but anyway, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Absolutely. Thanks for having thanks us. For having so Holly Keepa, I don't think uh, maybe a lot of people even know what is Holly Keepa, what's mm -hmm. its history and what's your mission and uh, what are you guys about? So Halakipa is um, a nonprofit, statewide nonprofit in our community, long, um, long history serving the community. Um, our agency primarily focuses on addressing the needs of youth in our state, um, and meeting families where they are, whether they are experiencing crisis or needing extra support. Mm -hmm. We have a huge variety of programs um, that address issues and are here to support youth and their families. Um, our, for our purposes, our program um, that we're here to speak with you about today is our um, Therapeutic Family Homes Program, Transitional Family Homes Program, which is a therapeutic foster care. And I'll uh, let Jessica give you a little more information about what we do. Okay, so you, it's, a, it's a Transitional <laughs> Family Home Program, right. but inside of that is something called Therapeutic Foster, foster care. care. That's yes. right. Tell us, yes. what, what does that mean? What are the differences between those? Mm -hmm. So transitional family homes is just the name of our program. Therapeutic foster care is what we carry so out. We... It's often called treatment foster care. So any child that comes into our care, into one of our homes, is going to receive more services than um, a child in general licensing foster care. Okay, so. So, so these programs, whether we're calling a transitional family home or mm -hmm. therapeutic uh, uh, foster care, they're both a foster care program, is, or they're both related to foster care? Yes, yeah. They're really, the names could be interchangeable. Okay. Yeah. And so Holly Keepa does uh, foster care work, and is that, is that the bulk of what it does, or would you say that's about half of what it does? Or? Mm. Holly Keepa as an agency has m many programs, ranging from outreach um, to intensive in-home therapeutic services, independent living skills, we provide shelter, we provide... Um, transitional sheltering, so there's there's a huge array of programs that fall under the umbrella of Halakipa as an agency. Um, and then our program, um, as we mentioned, is a transitional family home program in which we provide therapeutic foster care services to you. Okay, and yeah. you said you're an agency. Are you an agency of the state? Nonprofit. We're a nonprofit. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing that you, most of your funding comes from the state or That's the, right. the federal government yes. or correct, and possibly uh, uh, grants. And, That's right, uh, not, and even individuals. And you probably mm -hmm. have fundraisers throughout the year as well. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, when I was reading online, it looks like your organization's 50 years old this year. That's right. It's a huge milestone. Mm -hmm. Obviously, started because of a real need in the community yes. for this, mm -hmm. and a continuing need. And uh, I'm guessing also, unfortunately, that we're seeing an increase in the need for mm. your services rather than a decrease. Is that mm -hmm. a correct assumption? Sure. I'm there, I mean, the need is always there, unfortunately, for now. And as you know, resources are just always scarce. Um, yeah. There could always be more services in place um, and different ways that the system approaches the reasons why youth end up needing services in the first place. So we really are here to work on these issues as a systemic issue, but also to close gaps for youth who've been navigating systems for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. So tell us about what's the difference between a therapeutic foster home and a traditional uh, fostering system that we may or may not be familiar with? Sure. So any child coming into foster care, um, they're being removed from a home situation that is typically unsafe. They're facing abuse, neglect, um, substance abuse may be present in the home, um, a varied of reasons why they're leaving. So coming in, um, a child may go into what's called a general licensing foster home. I know that can be confusing, but um, it's traditional foster care, what people think of. So a child is brought to someone's home. With therapeutic care, um, a child is facing even more, they face more trauma. Um, they're experiencing kind of um, 
challenges with their behavior, uh, challenges with just processing what's going on. So many of our kids in care are older. We're looking at more adolescents. We do uh, accept any child from 3 to 17 into our program, mm -hmm. but typically we're looking at children from 10 to 17. So, um, the adolescent years. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. One other uh, important qualification is that sometimes when we think of foster care, mm -hmm. we think of um, homes that are perhaps temporarily taking a youth or a child into their home with plans for permanency or a path to permanency mm -hmm. in relocating this youth. For our program, we are, um, our primary goal is to always reunite mm -hmm. um, with the family whenever possible. So the, the function of our program is really to take in youth who are struggling for whatever reason. Often they're coming, they're stepping down from a higher level of care, meaning they've received community-based residential treatment for whatever um, factors that they're experiencing, whether it be psychiatric or substance abuse, whatever that may be. And then we connect them with one of our families who are trained in the therapeutic foster home piece for three months, six months, nine month intervals, sometimes longer. But again, our goal is to take this time to stabilize the youth and to do whatever steps need to be taken with the family in family therapy or intensive treatments that we can provide and then reunite hopefully with stability and resources in place. So would a typical scenario be something like, I don't know, maybe uh, the father got arrested, the mom's got a, a drug problem, mm -hmm. the kid's kind of gotten lost in the shuffle. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're thinking, well, who's, who's here to take care of me? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then maybe grandma, uncle, neighbor calls the state, calls the social services, mm -hmm. uh, 311, is that uh, the United Way, or maybe, or they just know about you guys directly and they can reach out to you. Generally, our referrals are um, they're processed through the Department of Health um, through what's called Family Guidance Centers. So referrals would originally go through this Family Guidance Center, um, sometimes from the school, sometimes from the community-based treatment that they're receiving. There's a number of ways that referrals can mm -hmm. get to them. From there, they're assigned a case coordinator, and that case coordinator starts putting into action referrals that they think would best meet the needs of this youth. And from there, we would receive a referral Referral if um, therapeutic foster home would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, mm -hmm. and then the, the goal is three, six, nine months until the parents can get stabilized. That's right. And then how often do the kids, I mean, obviously, if you're coming from a house with a lot of trauma and issues, it would be probably almost uh, normal for those kids to have their own mm -hmm. issues as well. And th that's the majority of the population, would you say, that the kids that you're working with? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the big thing that we, I always like to say is there's no bad families. Um, mm -hmm. It's just challenging situations. So a lot of our families were looking at, um, you know, lack of resources, a lot of stress, and there's some poor decision making in there, but it affects the child in that environment. So what we're hoping to do, and the other thing I wanted to mention that makes, our, that makes therapeutic foster care different, is that when a child comes into our care, they do receive treatment. And what treatment is, is usually therapy and then can be some additional supplemental resources as well right. when they come into our program. So that not only supports the uh, child, definitely, but also our resource caregivers and then also the bio family. Once they've adjusted to the home, um, typically month to month, they start to do uh, family sessions, mm -hmm. usually. With um, their bio family. With their mm -hmm. bio family. Okay. It might be bio family, it might be adoptive family. Um, it mm -hmm. just depends on what the, child, the situation of the child. Mm -hmm. To be completely honest, not all of our children have homes to go to. That's right. Um, so we might be looking at other permanency options mm -hmm. for them to go into as well. I see. You mean the mm -hmm. family's just not there to go back to? That's right. right. Okay. Right. And then, which is, uh, yeah, hard. You guys are right on the front lines of, of, mm -hmm. of our of helping people mm -hmm. to to recover from difficult situations. Yeah. So I applaud you for that oh, work that you, you do. It's mm -hmm. you know. You have, you got to have hearts of, of gold and probably a little bit of steel at the same time <laughs> to deal with everything that you got to deal with coming down the pike. But when you got beautiful people like you in charge of this, then oh. the world's just you know I, it gives me hope for the for the future oh. that we've got this. And the fact it's been going on for fifty years, you guys mm -hmm. are carrying on a legacy, improving on that legacy. Obviously, you have a huge uh, staff that you rely on and volunteers as well. So if someone were interested in becoming a foster parent or maybe specifically a therapeutic foster mm -hmm. home, um, does it need to be a married couple with kids? Does, could it be a single person? Are, are there, uh, what kind of qualifications do, do, would mm -hmm. that person have to go through? Or, and even, um, yeah. No, 
So you can be married, you can be single, you can be cohabitating with a partner. Um, it doesn't, um, there's no limitations on that per se. Um, we do ask that you be 25 or older. Um, and it just matters on the licensing side. So um, there's, no, there's no limitation there. Okay, mm -hmm. and people just go mm -hmm. undergo a normal background check and, and everything mm -hmm. to become a foster yeah. parent. And there's a number of clearances that you have to walk through and then um, uh, different types of paperwork that we go through um, for when you apply. So what the process would look like to become a foster parent, I don't know if you were going to ask yep. that or not, yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. is um, you would first apply. So you would contact us um, or you can go on our website. And what Holly, is your website? www.hallikipa.org. H-A-L-E-K-I-P-A. -E exactly. Yes, yes exactly. exactly. Um, you can apply on there or you can um, contact um, me or Michelle mm -hmm. um, and you can apply with us directly. We'll email you um, or mail you even an application if you're interested. And then from there, we go through um, a couple steps of screening, but also paperwork. And then after that, what is required of all of our families is at least 33 hours of what we call pre-service training. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are questioning, like, I don't know if I have the skills. I don't know if I have enough knowledge to be able to do this. We teach you all of that. Um, mm -hmm. We teach you about um, different diagnoses, behaviors, um, how to work with, with children that are in these situations, uh, traumatic experiences. All of our training is based in trauma-informed care. Mm -hmm. um, and so we try to arm all of our parents as best we can with the training. Um, and then we do, uh, at the end, we do a home study. And then hopefully, um, if everything goes well, become licensed with us. And, and if I may, one of our values as an agency is mm -hmm. if you were to become um, a resource caregiver with our program, we wouldn't just push you through all this paperwork and mm -hmm. training, place a child in your home and see you later. No. We take a very active and continued role um, in making sure that resource caregivers have ongoing training and support, that we are extremely accessible. The therapist that is assigned to a youth in this program is uh, assigned 24 hours a day. So should there be an incident that takes place after hours, um, that therapist is, is on call and available to respond. Um, so we, it's a huge value of ours that mm -hmm. our families know and that the youth in our care know that we, um, we're here every step of the way and that we, we stay involved. And I, what's, the, what's the most important quality for a foster, foster parent or a foster home to, to have, would you say? Patience. Yeah, patience. With any parent, one. patience is yeah. so important. Yes. I was yeah. going to go, I'd probably love, you know, yes. patience would be. Patience, patience over love sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes. I'm sure, and both in abundant quality, because yes. right. if you're interested in, in helping out, right. obviously you've got to have right. that and, and um, you know, other, other That's right. strengths. And I think, you know, um, Every youth out there that receives the service is just as unique from one human being to another. And there are all kinds of families that do things all kinds of ways. And there's mm -hmm. youth that will be a good fit and families that will be a good fit um, if, we, if we look in the right directions. And I think some of the most important features of res resource caregivers are um, availability, mm -hmm. to, you know, stability, routine, um, approaching people, uh, meeting, meeting youth where they are at. Um, and affirming the people that these youth are becoming and mm -hmm. really fostering um, and developing what is unique and great about them and celebrating that, um, working towards helping them, you know, develop their, the most independence um, in the, in the, with their, you know, using their own natural resources. Mm. Is, is it sort of likened to being a Hanai auntie or uncle? Yes. I mean, I, could, I can imagine that's a good analogy yes. here because mm -hmm. you're not the, the bio parent, but you're like a parent and, and, right. and stepping in in that role of right. guidance and support and love right. and uh, you have a, a pool of, of, of kids that need homes and you also have a pool of foster parents and then do you kind of go through individually and say I think Sally would be good That's here right. and, mm -hmm. and kind of match folks up That's right. do you try and keep the kids in the same um, like if, if they're from Eva, keep them in Eva, or does that factor into things uh, all the time? Or do you sometimes want to take them out of that of, of Eva, uh, go to Kaimuki or something? Either all of those combinations exist. Um, unfortunately, we um, we don't have a huge array of resource caregivers in diverse geographic areas at the t at the moment. We'd love to develop that further. So it really, it's about placement and then working on securing the environment. Um, and, and meeting their needs within the environment in which they're placed. Um, but 
there's many combinations in which we would always try to consider those factors. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so one thing that's really helpful mm -hmm. too um, for anybody who might be thinking of becoming a resource caregiver, so we always do matching meetings with our youth that's um, right. and therapeutic care that's, that's mandatory. Okay. That you will um, meet the child before they're placed in your home, and that's on behalf of the child and the family. We want to make sure that um, the child feels comfortable, especially because of the experiences they may have been through. Yeah. But also the same with the family. So um, you're not going to just have a child dropped off at your doorstep. You'll have a chance to meet them. We'll have a chance to talk story and just get to know one another. And then we'll go from there if we want to move forward with placement. Placement, a lot of thought goes into that um, before placing a child into your home. So geographic location is extremely important. Where they go to school, maybe any extracurricular activities that they might be involved in. Um, the makeup of the resource caregiver's home. So if it is a single parent, um, if it is a family, but they have young children, um, if it's a family, yeah. but they have older children, if um, they don't have any children at all, um, it can all depend on. So we think about all of those things mm -hmm. when we're placing a child. A lot of thought goes into that. You kind of got a Rubik's Cube Excel spreadsheet in your head when you're matching <laughs> right. all together. That's exactly well, we'll, right. And we will uh, continue this conversation. We're going to take a mm -hmm. little break here. Okay. Um, but as you can see, this is like really important uh, uh, organization, mm -hmm. incredible people that that help run this and manage these programs. I have the distinct honor and privilege of having Michelle Rocca and Jessica Carter of Holly Keepa, which is House of Welcome? Uh, is that right? House of Friendliness. Friendliness. I'm sorry. That's OK. House of Friendliness. <laughs> OK, House of Friendliness. And you, of course, exemplify that. We will be back in just a minute. This is Winston Welch on Out and About, the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. And uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Hi, guys. I'm your host, Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you. And uh, aloha. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at one o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Aloha, we're back, we're live. I'm Winston Welton. This is Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. I am talking with the lovely duo of Michelle Rocca and Jessica Carter, who work in the uh, therapeutic foster care program of Hale Kipa Transitional Family Home Program. There's a ton of programs at Hale Kipa, and I will mention them in a second. But anyway, th thank you so much again for coming to the show and, and telling us about this wonderful organization you've got. Mm -hmm. um, as I was looking online, you have these programs. You have community-based outreach and advocacy, emergency shelter mm -hmm. services you mentioned, uh, an advocate program, uh, attendant care program, uh, independent living intensive in-home program. I think you mentioned a couple of those intensive independent living skills, school attendant support services, school success programs, step up housing, transitional family home programs, wraparound services, youth outreach. You've got a ton of stuff mm, going on right. there. How many people do you have working with you? Oh gosh, I wouldn't even know offhand, but many, many across all of these programs, and um, many of these programs are offered statewide. So exactly, we're yeah. quite a large You're organization. a statewide organization. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got mm -hmm. presence on every island. That's every right. Island. Okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, this is all, uh, so when, uh, I'm sorry, we were talking right before we, uh, the break about the, how um, huge these problems can be, right. and also, but there's solutions to them. You're right. part of the solution. Foster families are part of the solution. Do you have a shortage right now of foster homes and folks willing to mm -hmm. take kids in? Always, always. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah, and I would say um, right now in Hawaii, there's probably about 1,400 children in foster care um, across the state. 
However, for therapeutic foster care, there's not a, a specific number that we have, mm -hmm. but at any time there's between 20 to 30 children on a, um, what's almost like a, a wait list. They're just waiting to be um, placed in a home. Right. And the challenge with therapeutic uh, foster homes is the fact that we do take that time and attention. So we wanna find a really um, good specific home for the child. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's why sometimes it can be more of a challenge and why we need more families. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, um, if I can mention too, what we're looking for is we're yes. looking for families that are open to serving full time, meaning having a youth in their home from anywhere to three to nine months, just like their own child. Um, they'll take them to school, they'll take them to sports practice or whatever. Um, we're also looking for families to serve as respite, meaning if you're not quite sure if this is something you may want to do, you can think about respite, which is providing um, time of respite for the families. So if they need a weekend um, alone, uh, or if they need to go to the mainland for an emergency or whatever circumstance it might be, they're going on vacation, we need families that are willing to take uh, children for one night up to two weeks, three weeks even. Mm -hmm. um, so we need really short term. The other option that we have are what are called Kamala homes, and those are emergency uh, homes. So kind of the same thing as respite, but a little bit different. And um, those are, again, anywhere from a few nights to up to 30 days mm -hmm. where we need a home. So those are the three types of families that we're looking for, and we're in need of all of those families. Longer term commitment, mm -hmm. uh, respite care, mm -hmm. and emergency. And That's emergency right. care. Mm -hmm. and, and again, the, the therapeutic foster home differs from regular foster care in that these, these kids have been through maybe a, a more difficulties, more degree of trauma mm -hmm. or, or and issues where they uh, need to be taken out. Can children self-refer to your program or do you uh, do you see that? I haven't come across that. No. Have you? no. no. Um, it, uh, typically the referral would need to come through the Department of Health mm -hmm. but I imagine if there was a youth out there that was really wanting to get on our radar um, they mm -hmm. could perhaps speak to someone at their school or in their community about reaching out to a, a family guidance center. So if you're a concerned auntie, uncle, neighbor, family friend, what would you recommend for saying that, you know, this kid really doesn't belong in, the, in this environment because it's not safe, it's not, it's not healthy? Who would you, where, would you, where should they start out? Um, I would say calling Child Welfare Services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Child uh, Welfare Services. Yeah, or even mm -hmm. the crisis line, which I should know off the top of my head, but I don't. But you can call the crisis number, um, and that's a statewide number. But also, uh, child welfare services is mm -hmm. where I would begin. If you were an adult if you're concerned, concerned about, you, about a child, yeah. mm -hmm. that's what I mm -hmm. might think of yeah. CPS. Right. Yes, exactly. Okay. Or and child protective services, mm -hmm. but here it's called child welfare. Services. It's called child welfare services, mm -hmm. and that's a division of the Department of Health. That's a division of the Department of Human Services. But um, just generally speaking, and anecdotally speaking, if you are an adult in the community concerned about a minor, mm -hmm. that is the first number to call. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, over the course of a year, how many kids would come in and out of a, a program? Mm. It really depends on how many resource caregivers we have available and, um, and the length of stay that youth are, are experiencing in our program. It's a little easier to share with you that we almost never meet the needs of all the youth that um, referrals have come through. So um, there's, there's always people who are waiting for a bed to open up in a, in a home. And sometimes some, some kids end up waiting longer than others for the mm -hmm. reasons that Jessica had shared. Because of our, um, because we're so careful to place appropriately. The last thing we want is to put someone in a home and there's a blowout the next day mm -hmm. or, or immediately. So we really do take time to think about all the dynamics of that whole household, the cultural values, the other youth that are placed there, or whether they have biological children in the home mm -hmm. and what those dynamics would look like. So it's almost like doing a, a, a puzzle every yeah. every time, and it's unique every time. Or maybe even pets, if they have pets. Oh, yeah. uh, exactly, that and, might and be somebody has a allergies. Or a negative. Or, mm -hmm. I can yes. imagine that. And so you get families that certify, they go through the 33 hours. Does mm -hmm. that training, does that certification last a year or a couple years? Or Exactly. Uh, uh, well, the training lasts... Um, Indefinitely, really. Uh, but you do have to reapply and get recertified every year. You don't have to go through the 33 hours of training, mm -hmm. but what we do require is 20 additional hours of training. Each year. So each year, uh, every year, annually. It, uh, um, 
really good thing, obviously, <laughs> yes. because as, the more you can mm -hmm. know about anything, the better right. off you can be at helping with it. Right. What, and um, Jessica offers ongoing training. Yes, um, and monthly. she Monthly. Mm -hmm. And she really works hard to um, assess relevant and valuable topics that, um, you know, for an opportunity for what the foster homes are experiencing to share with us and that we provide um, training based on their feedback. Mm -hmm. She's also really committed to flexibility. So if somebody out there is hearing, oh gosh, when would I ever have 33 hours in a row mm -hmm. to commit yeah. to training? Um, um, Jessica works really hard to work with families okay. who are interested to say, well, we can, we can get X amount of this training done in the evenings. You know, weekends. based on your work schedule, mm -hmm. weekends, mm -hmm. awesome. uh, whatever it may be. And I imagine this is really gratifying for, I mean, obviously for the kids, it's just an enormous benefit that's really, that you hear about years later, people mm -hmm. coming back and saying that program saved my life. Mm -hmm. It allowed mm -hmm. me to see different appropriate adult uh, behaviors role modeled for me and, and many other uh, things just taking them out of a uh, situation. What do the families say? Uh, what do the, the, the foster parents say um, that participate in this? I do want to say that we have some of the most amazing resource caregivers mm -hmm. in our program. Um, I know that they've been a huge inspiration to me just watching how much they care for the youth, um, how much patience they have, mm -hmm. um, but really how they go above and beyond uh, for all the children in their homes. The thing that I hear the most is just that they really uh, value making a difference in their lives mm -hmm. and knowing that they could have a positive uh, relationship with this child and giving them right. a safe stable home especially because a lot of our youth are adolescents mm -hmm. um, they're getting ready to go into adulthood and so that's so important for them to know that they're kind of helping them launch into adulthood um, mm -hmm. in a really stable and healthy way Do you find that the that the kids and the foster parents maintain contact even years later after mm -hmm. Often they do. Mm -hmm. And we have resource caregivers that have provided their service with our agency for over a decade or more. Mm -hmm. um, so the families that we do have, have have also, you know, had a positive experience and we've been able to retain retain them for, for a long time because of the rewards that they experience and um, the personal fulfillment in participating with this program. Mm -hmm. Some of them have shared, you know, that they got a youth in their home that was just at such high risk of so many, so many challenges they were facing. And just a few months later to see them graduate and yeah. they've succeeded in sports and they've found, um, you know, access to different activities that they've enjoyed and maintained is really life changing for them as well. It's, it's just amazingly um, gratifying work for, for you all. I know just to see the success stories that you see on a daily basis. The difficulties that you're able to help folks overcome and then seeing other good people open up their homes and mm -hmm. their hearts to right. to uh, these kids that need yeah. it and obviously you're providing support for them as well i have a lot of other questions that i want to ask about this program i hope if you will come back another time oh, so that absolutely. we can talk um, and talk some more specifics about yes. special special uh, focuses like maybe even lgbt youth mm -hmm. and Absolutely. How that yes. might work in, or, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, some of your other in incredible programs that you sure. got here, because you have so many, we just can't cover it all today. Mm -hmm. but That's right. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. Yes, thank you for having yeah, us. You guys are truly an inspiration for me and in, in what you do. As you see, it is uh, always another wonderful episode of Out and About, and when you have such wonderful guests uh, talking about these wonderful programs, uh, it makes my job a great pleasure and easy. So. For today, we have to say goodbye, uh, hui ho, but I would like to thank our broadcast engineer, Robert McLean, our floor manager, Haley Ikeda, and Mark Ito, our intern, <coughs> our executive producer is Jay Fidel, who puts it all together. I will see you here every other Monday on Out and About for another edition of the show where you will hopefully be as inspired as I am. See you later, ahui ho.